Would you like to live your best life possible, regardless of your imperfections? Discover cutting-edge tools and inspiration to let go of your limitations and expand your life beyond what you've ever imagined. On Imperfect Brilliance, we help you tap into your unique gifts and talents, uncovering and letting your brilliance shine. Join certified facilitator and coach Betsy McLaughlin as she delves into different areas of your life to get unstuck and create the life that is truly possible for you. Betsy has changed her life by utilizing the tools and techniques she is sharing with you. What if your willingness to acknowledge your brilliance is the catalyst to creating a new reality? When you stop judging you, what else can you create in your life and in the world? Join Betsy live every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern to create magical and joyous possibilities for an hour of laughs, questions, tips, and more. We are excited to contribute and play with you. Yes, we are excited to play with you. I just listened to the um, introduction. I'm Betsy McLaughlin, and welcome, welcome, you guys, to another fun episode of Imperfect Brilliance, and I am really excited today to play with this wonderful, enthusiastic being that I actually don't know that we've ever met in person, but I, I've met her online. And Catherine, how do you pronounce your last name? Hi, Betsy. Oh, I, I don't think we've ever met in person either, but yeah. So my last name is Catherine Oster. Oster. Okay. Oster. I, yeah. I, probably, I probably would have mutilated it just a little bit, but she, you know, she's such a fun and joyful person. And, you know, you can, we've met in, online and through various things and we have a lot of classes that intersect and we are both certified facilitators with access consciousness and I know of her and about her and I've interacted with her in different things so it's just I'm so glad that we live in the time we do where I can be friends with somebody and I've never even met them which just kind of sometimes is it's just a really neat thing like wow look at that it's just so fun yeah and, that really is amazing actually I've never thought about that before <laughs> Yeah, it, it, I know. I remember when you know the internet like first started, and I, I met somebody, and I used to have a rubber stamp business, a paper, and then it kind of blossomed into a paper arts business, and it was a store, and this oh, it was just so much fun and wonderful. And I met somebody who lived in Canada, and I invited her to come to my house and do some classes and play, and people were like you've never met her and you're going to have her like at your house. And, oh my, you know, like they went into this and we had become friends and been friends online for quite a while. So in my world, I'm like, yeah, but we're friends. But for them, it was just so funny. And I think now it's so much more commonplace than, you know, it was back, back then, but right. anyhow, I, like, and I totally a, digress. <laughs> that's such a great example of what we're going to talk about. <laughs> Like, you know, you yeah. inviting somebody you've never met is so out of control. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> and so a little bit about Catherine. And she, besides being a facilitator with Access Consciousness, she's also a professional horse trainer like, Ooh, and a riding coach. She lives in Saskatchewan, which to me is always kind of fun name to say, <laughs> Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan, Canada, and I know, you know, as we were talking before this show started, and I have another friend who lives in that area, and it's been really, really, really cold lately up there, um, and she's also a mom to some amazing kids, and if that wasn't enough, she also <laughs> owns and operates a 4,000-acre grain farm, and she owns a small herd of <laughs> small herd of yes. cattle. <laughs> so I think she might be a little bit on the busy side. I don't know, but you know. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, so it's welcome, amazing. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> I'm and, so um, grateful to be here, and actually, like, really 
honored. Like I was, when you asked me, Betsy, I was like, hell yeah, I'm going to make this happen. I'm here. So oh, thank cool. you. too. Thank you. That's awesome. Well, it's funny because the show really tells me, you know, who, because I, I will have my ideas, and, but the show is like, yep, no, not now. Yes. No, no. Cause what I will ask like, okay, who would you like to be, you know, have on the show and I will ask questions. And so I have learned how to listen to the, um, the desires of who the show gets would be a great contribution. And so then your name just popped and I was like, yes, you know, and so (laughs) we're talking today about being out of control and already a couple of things that we've addressed go like fit perfectly in here because you can be very linear right and you've got well I've never had so and so on my show or this person's been on the show 12 times why would I have them back right but when you toss all that out the window and you go with following the energy or like being willing to be out of control really fun things show up and so we're going to be talking about what that is today. And if you guys have never played with the tools of access consciousness, we ask a lot of questions. So you're going to hear us referencing different things or whatever, you know, we may or may not ask questions, but just so you're like, why are they asking so many questions? It's one of the things that we have discovered that changes where we might decide certain things, but by asking questions, it opens the door for different possibilities. So I know like Catherine um, being a mom and operating a grain farm and having a cattle and being a facilitator and a horse trainer and a riding coach. And I know you do other things, I'm sure. How do you like any one of those things could be something that you would be like, "Uh, no, I have to be in control. I have to, follow this formula of things. So how do you be out of control with these things? And then that's the first part of this question. And then the second part of the question would be, what have you implemented in your daily life to get out of being in control so much? (laughs) <laughs> so just a, of just, like, just a little easy questions yeah yeah um so okay I'm just gonna go back to my pre I always call them my pre-access days my pre-access consciousness days um and I wasn't all of these things and I actually couldn't probably even do like I think I probably would have controlled myself to death literally mm-hmm. um So I used to be such a control freak of magnitude. Like I had my whole week, like every day of the week was literally planned out like pretty much to the minute with what I thought Uh I should be doing every single day. And when anything, so then, so I had that and, and I would follow it and I was comfortable in my life and that was fine. But Uh um, it was pretty, pretty boring actually when I look at it now because I knew everything that was going to happen in the day like there was never any magical surprises it was exactly what I put down um what started happening though is my husband so my husband is the original farmer and he grew up in his family farm with his parents and the cattle and then and we got together and we we were dating and um we were living together and he would something would go on with the farm like he needed me to give him a ride somewhere like out of the blue because um something showed up like and he didn't know and then I would get really feeling quite frustrated and agitated with him because I was so committed to my plan and um and I started and then that was a really good way of saying it like being committed (laughs) to my plan of being in control This is right? my plan, people. I love that. I know. And I was like, how dare you? Strike a chord or two with me. <laughs> yeah. So I was starting to get really frustrated. I would get frustrated <laughs> with him. And then I, 
even before access, I started noticing that in our relationship. And I'm like, like Catherine, you know, he can't control the weather. He can't control that it started raining when he was spraying and he needs a ride. Like, but I would, that would give me such a wedgie. And, and then my whole day would be knocked off. But I, what I started hating was that my plan had so much control over my emotions. And I'm like, so I guess that's probably when I started looking for something different, um, knowing that, like, but I didn't know how to be a different way, right? And then Access, um, uh, I remember, I just saw Access bars um, on the internet when I was scrolling, after the internet came along, scrolling Facebook. And um, am I still? Can you still hear me? Yes. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. okay, cool. Um, and then um, after, like, getting my bars ran and learning some of these tools, like some of that started to change for me and um, yeah. started to take more, cl- I started not having as a, I was willing to give up my plan a little bit more. <laughs> mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah. And things started getting easier, obviously in our relationship. And I noticed things getting easier the more that I was willing to let go of the control of everything in my life. And, um, and I remember some of the other things happening was I started to be able to do things faster, you know, like tasks, like in the yard, like we had a really big yard. I'll never forget. Um, after maybe having my bars run like three or four times over a period of maybe three or four months, it was like springtime and I was going out to trim the hedges And I would, in my day planner, I would mark down like three or four afternoons for trimming hedges because that's literally how long (laughs) it would take me. And so I remember getting done the hedges in like two afternoons. And I looked at my day planner and I'm like, what? Like, I'm done? I'm supposed to, this is supposed to take me four days, but I'm done. And I have all this extra time. I'm like, wow. And I wasn't as tired as I used to be after Mm. doing it. And, and I started like noticing stuff like that. So that was really cool. (laughs) Wow. That's, that's an amazing thing to notice. So I wonder, you know, and I, I've talked about it a little bit on the show too. It's, you know, like how much energy do we expend like trying to control everything? So You've given some really good examples of, you know, having your day completely scheduled out. (laughs) And then, you know, somebody comes along and just, it's like um, bowling pins, right? You've got them all lined up perfectly. And then somebody comes along with the bowling ball and (laughs) knocks them all over. And you're like, you know, and then you have a choice of what are you going to do when all your all the pins have been knocked over. Are you going to get mad? Are you going to run and try to line them up exactly the way they were or the way you thought they were supposed to be? Or what are you going to do? And, um, you know, looking, even what you talked about, about looking at how you were reacting and how it really wasn't contributing to either what you wanted to create for your life so with those things, as you started to realize it, okay, first of all, too, if you could just talk, you've mentioned the bars a couple times. So if anybody listening oh, yes. might not know what it is, if you could explain that and then how you started kind of letting go of some control. Um, okay. So yeah. So access bars is kind of one of the, one of the first core classes within Access Consciousness, and it's um, a body process. So it involves hands touching the body. There's on the head, actually. There's 32 points on the head that are associated with different areas of your life. So control is one of them. Money, control, creativity. (laughs) Um, Every point is something different and somebody like just the person touching the bars points and asking the energy to run energetically like defrags your being your energetic stuff that you carry around you start to let some of it go and it just starts to change without you having to 
do anything. You just lay on a massage table or in a chair or wherever is comfortable for you for about an hour or 90 minutes and somebody runs your bars and you can be different after without trying, which is really mm-hmm. cool. Right. And, and that's, that's one of the things you, you explained it differently than I've ever heard it explained. So thank you for that. And, um, one of the things for me, and I, I facilitate this class on a fairly regular basis. And, and one of the things is learning. You actually don't have to do anything, e- yes. you know, either when you're receiving this energetic process or when you're gifting it you and that's something so different like I remember when I first learned it I was so in my head and like I had to figure it out and I had to know how it worked and what where are your hands now and what point are they on and da 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 you know like Miss Control Freak here (laughs) and I (laughs) I I, take confession time so my husband also learned it with me which I'm so grateful for so we can exchange bars and he runs my bars all the time and it's wonderful and but when we first did it I was I would be like okay and I'd get the head chart and I'd hold the head chart and I was like okay what point is he on now and does he have his hands on the right place and it's like oh my god <laughs> talk about right talk about a control freak and but that's for me that's how I I thought that's how I learned that's how yeah. I, you know, just was in so many different areas of my life. So when you put your hands on these different points, things are released. You don't even know that they're in there and they just get released energetically. So you don't have, and you don't have to know anything. You don't have to do mantras. You don't have to do, you know, anything. It's just the, your, the energy and your bodies know what to do. So it's, it's this magical, magical thing that, if you all get a chance to experience it, we, I know I can speak for you on this piece. Catherine is like, <laughs> get your bars run, like check yes. it out, try it out. Right. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> okay. So I, you're think not, how did, might, I think we might yeah, want to wait until we come back from break for you to go to the next piece of this. Cause I don't want to, have you get started and then have to go, hold on a second. So we'll be back <laughs> to get some some more questions and things that Catherine played with to let go of some of her control freakness after the break. Stay tuned, you guys. Free your mind with Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Connect at omtimes.com. Ohm Times, creating a more conscious lifestyle. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. Are you looking to change anything in your life, to have an even greater appreciation of everything around you? Would you enjoy having a life of more joy and greater abundance and explore what is possible for you? My name is Betsy McLaughlin, and I invite you to explore simple and pragmatic tools that I share on my radio show, Imperfect Brilliance. I know firsthand that you can change anything. We explore tools and questions with amazing guests, offering all kinds of conversations on living your best life. I invite you to listen in Tuesdays at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern to Imperfect Brilliance. Consider a coaching call with me and let's explore what you would like your life to be like. 
Visit my website at www.creatingyumminess.com and you're invited to call in to Imperfect Brilliance with your questions Tuesdays at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. I look forward to connecting. Coping 19, brought to you by CDC and the Ad Council. Do you feel like your emotions are all over the place? That's normal during this abnormal time. There are a number of ways to cope. Maintain a healthy routine, get enough sleep, eat nutritious food, and exercise at least 30 minutes each day. Schedule some time to talk with a friend or family member. And remember, you can always take a few deep breaths to feel more centered. Find more self-care and coping tips at coping-19.org. Welcome back to Imperfect Brilliance. Betsy McLaughlin here with Catherine Oster, and we are talking about control. And we've done a couple confessions. I didn't know we were going to have true confessions, Catherine, about our own (laughs) control freakness, but it kind of came out. (laughs) Yeah, so, okay, so I talked about... um, getting my bars ran and having Mm -hmm. a taste of what letting go of control. I mean, even getting your bars ran, you just start to let go of control. So I didn't do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like that is, that's probably the first choice that I made without even knowing what I was changing. I started, um, like I said, things started happening differently for me showing up. I started getting faster and having more energy And I'm like, wow, this is freaking awesome. Like, I want to have more of this. I started, well, as things get easier in your life, you just start to get a little bit happier. I'm like, this is great. Um, So I took took a foundation class. I took a bars and a foundation class probably about a year after my very first bars session. And, um, And in the foundation class, I learned about the tool, how does it get any better than this? And um, a a foundation class is kind of one of the next classes after you take a bars class in access. If you're if you're um, looking for a little bit more about changing more in your life, the foundation invites you to totally change the foundation of your life. I guess if you if that's what you're looking Mm -hmm. for. And um, Mm -hmm. actually, no, you get the tool. How does it get any better than this in bars now? Are you, you do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So inviting you to ask a question, um, no matter what's showing up in your life, if it's like crappy or if it's really great, like ask that question, how does it get any better than this? And so I started using that and, and both of my kids were really young then. And, um, I'm not, I was never a natural baby person, <laughs> Like, you know, I was never the woman who dreamed of having kids. <laughs> um, so when my kids were younger, I would definitely say they invited me to get out, get more out of control because, I mean, you can only control so much when you have babies. You know, mm-hmm. they dictate a lot of how your day goes. And, and so they invited me to use that question a lot. So every time with mm-hmm. them, when I would feel that frustrated energy that I have to do this because I, I was wanting to do something else. Um, mm-hmm. But here the baby is again, they're hungry or they need me for something. I mm-hmm. started asking that question, how does it get any better than this? And really committed to it. Um, and I started noticing having more ease with being a mom that I didn't feel like I was any good at. <laughs> Started mm. getting a little bit easier for me. So when you how about to, that? <laughs> yeah. When I started noticing the results and having and seeing some change in myself, my ability to to have more, not be so reactive and frustrated all the time because something knocked the bowling ball came and knocked over my bowling pins. I'm like, oh my god, I'm using this all the time. So I kind of became a control freak of using that question. (laughs) So you substituted, huh? (laughs) Yes, I substituted. (laughs) (laughs) That's so funny. Oh my gosh. 
<laughs> well, and let's talk a little bit about, is it a bad thing to be a control freak? You know, right. like, is, is it a bad thing? Is it a good thing? What is it, Catherine? That's so interesting because actually another one of the things that I do in my days, I work with Crystal Crawford. Um, she's also another certified facilitator and I work in her business, in her website building and class creation and stuff. And we had that conversation about being a control freak and how you can use that capacity. So maybe what if being a control freak, freak is a special ability? How can you use it to create and change things in your life rather than as a maybe destruction like I was doing in the beginning. Um, so it's interesting. Um, you know, another conversation that we have in other access classes too, is what if the greatest thing you make wrong about yourself? So for me or you Betsy would be being a control freak. Like what if that's actually what's strong about you? And when you can notice, when you can look at that thing, like being a control freak and get out of the judgment of it being a wrongness, then you can start to change and start using that tool, the control freak tool, that ability to be a control freak and start creating and changing things in your life with it, not breaking and destroying your life. Yes. <laughs> that is so succinctly said there. And one of the things that I am and still am really good at is making myself wrong and, you know, like judging myself. So this, the, the thing you shared with, what if the thing that you you have made yourself so dynamically wrong for that you've judged yourself or that others have judged of you, what if it actually is your strength, as Catherine was just asking? So, Catherine, if you have this idea, like, that you think being a control freak is this terrible thing and you shouldn't be it, you shouldn't do it, and here we are with this question of, well, what if it's actually a strength? Then if you start looking at that question, then what? Hmm, good question. <laughs> <laughs> so so the ability to, um, so controlling, taking it from a wrongness and a weapon that you're using to destroy yourself mm -hmm. and changing it and using it as a tool to create your life. So I, I definitely did that when I just became committed to the question. Like I had that question, how does it get any better than this all over the place in my house and sticky notes on my phone? Um, and then, and then noticing things changing um, like, hmm, do you have anything to say about that, Betsy? <laughs> I'm a little mm. bit lost for words right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you've already said quite some great things here and it's what you said about using it as a weapon against yourself. And then how good are we at that? And then we go to control ourselves even more. So if we've decided that we are just this terrible control freak. And we're we, so we, taking your analogy, mm -hmm. having it as a weapon, using it against ourselves, then how good do we become at honing that weapon? You know, until we are pretty yeah. well have annihilated ourselves into dust particles on the ground, and yet somehow we still keep going. So if we let go of that wrongness, of that weapon against ourselves, then what can you invite into your world that would be something that, okay, so let's say, and it could be what we're talking about today about being a control freak. It could be about anything that you've decided is something that's terribly wrong with you. And if you've flipped, you know, flipped the switch 
and you look at, well, is this a strength? And then if you start getting, well, maybe it is, then from there, I, I would love to explore, like, what other questions could people play with that if this is a really new conversation, well, what do they do with it, right? And so if, you, if you're willing to get out of having it be a weapon for yourself and you're willing to, yeah. to look at where maybe it isn't such a bad thing and actually also get out of the polarity of, of right or wrong or bad and be, okay, so if it is a strength, then what do I do? What can I do with this strength? How do I use it for something that would be advantageous for my life instead of continuing to disintegrate myself down into the dust particles of my weapon? <laughs> what, would, what would you like to add to that? <laughs> <laughs> well, that kind of what's really popping right now is like another question. Um, imagine really? that, another question. <laughs> I'm like, what else is possible now? Like if, if, if being a control freak isn't wrong, it's not bad, what mm-hmm. else is possible now? And then I started asking the universe, the universe to show me like universe show me what else is possible with this with being a control freak that I've never considered before and and really asking that I mean I I've asked what else is possible with so many things and you know what's really cool is oftentimes it'll show up like what else is possible will show up Mm. um and getting out of the you know, the polarity, like you said, the right and wrong allows you to notice what's showing up and, and not judge it as bad or wrong or, or not judge, not judge yourself as much as being bad or wrong and actually start to see the, the gift or the possibility that's in what's showing up. Um, let me see if I've got a, a story. I think there's a story in here somewhere. <laughs> um, you know, like a really simple example, like taking it back to being a mom with babies and, and me not being a natural baby person and, and having babies be the bowling pin that the bowling ball that knocked over my bowling pin. Um, going to that question too, like what else is possible here is like, then all of a sudden, if my, say my son, he was a pretty needy baby. He liked to be with mom a lot and he liked to be held. And Mm -hmm. that, that wasn't me. You know, I had my list I had to get done. I can't hold you. I have things to do. (laughs) Um, And then, and then the judgment of myself is a bad mom. Like, how could I feel this way? I don't want to be with my, you know, hold my baby all day. Mm -hmm. That right. would come up so strongly. And so, um, oh, the access conscious clearing statement, I use that a lot too. Um, mm-hmm. um, yeah, and, which, yeah, and that's ahead, great Betsy. because it, uh, it just clears out. You know, it, it's something that doesn't make sense, but it clears things energetically. And so much of what we've actually talked about today is energetic things. And here's a question for you, Catherine. Can you control energy and energetic stuff? No, you cannot. (laughs) (laughs) You can't control horses either or the weather. I was just going to say it's probably like trying to control horses or (laughs) kittens or puppies or your children. Yeah. How hard you try to do it, you can't. And think, you know, I look at all the time that I, the time and energy I spent trying to control things that I had no control over. And I look at it now and I still, even when I still try to control, because, you know, I'm way better, guys, but I'm not a completely reformed control freak. True, true. Yeah, me too. (laughs) Right. And so when I find myself going to like, trying it's like oh what am I trying to control here like what and for me what I see is when I'm doing that I'm like squeezing the possibilities in life out of things it's like you know and 
it, who wants to be, how, you know, controlled like that? I certainly don't. And so why would I think that anybody else or any other situation would? And so then I just can laugh at myself when I'm doing it. I'm like, what are you doing, you silly goose? You know, and just, okay, all right. So I get, guess what? I get to choose again. Just because I was being that energy two minutes ago doesn't mean I have to continue being it all day. And that's another one of the fun tools, you know, that we learn, live in 10 second increments yes. and you can, you can keep choosing. Um, how did you, as a control freak, if you, and you kind of already mentioned some of this earlier, like you had your day planned out. So mm. you, how do you possibly choose in 10 second increments if you got, but it's not on my schedule. <laughs> yeah. Right. So what do you do then? <laughs> yeah. Well, and so what, so the, I, I guess the ability of a control freak, so like you listed all of the things that I do in my life now, and I almost do all of them. Well, not quite all of them every day. We're not grain farming right now. The grain's in the bin, but, um, mm-hmm. you know, every day I engage with some horses almost, you know, quite regularly teach riding lessons, plus with my own business and the kids. And then, um, with the farm, I do the financials. So like my list, if my list of things is pretty long that I can be doing, but using the control freak as a capacity, I'm aware, I can be aware of all of those things Mm -hmm. simultaneously, like at the same time without um, having to control them. Like when you get into what you're aware of with the energy, like you can't control energy, but you can be aware of it. Mm -hmm. Um, so I have a list of like all the things, you know, probably that I'm going to be looking at in the next month. And now that's my day planner is like one list. And now when I get up in the mornings, I take some time, you know, I take about a half an hour and just do something. Usually it's reading a book or, or a manual or something. And then I'll look at my list and I'm like, okay, what requires the question that I ask is what requires my attention today? And I'll look at the list. And now it was really hard for me to do this in the beginning because I wanted to make sure I did the right stuff. Like getting, mm-hmm. getting your bars ran and getting out of what's right and wrong um, really invites you to be in the energy and the awareness of things. So I'll look at the list and I will say, okay, what requires my attention today? And things will pop. Or I'll be like, oh, yeah, I have to get the GST submitted, you know, by the end of the week. So I should start doing a little bit of that today. And, oh, yeah, I want to have my foundation class in a couple of months. So maybe I should post that is today the day. And trusting, like, that's another thing that really took me a little bit to get out of was the trust that I wouldn't forget something or trust that I wouldn't do the wrong thing. But I've also had it happen where I have forgotten something in quotation marks and Mm -hmm. it actually wasn't required for me to do (laughs) like, you know, two days later, I'm like, Oh my God, I forgot to do that. I'm like, Oh, I actually don't have to do that now. Cool. So you didn't have to waste, you know, the time that it took um, because it actually wasn't required. And yeah. Mm, That's beautiful. Um, I do believe we need to go to our second break, and then when we come back, we'll see what other questions and tips and maybe funny stories we have here (laughs) on getting out of control and what that can create for your life with Catherine after the break. Connecting you with the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Om Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Om Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Hello, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, host of Om Times Magazine's flagship radio show, What is Going Om? My passion is sifting through information, research and innovations from new thought teachers, speakers and researchers, pushing back the boundaries of what we know about life, energy, metaphysics and the universe. 
I love shifting perceptions about who we are, why we're here, and how quickly impossible becomes normal when we open our minds, expand our awareness, and accept that the only limits that exist are those we place upon ourselves. So if you're the kind of forward-thinking, eager investigator of what lies beyond the current reality that most perceive, why not make a date to come play with me in the field of possibilities at 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time every Thursday, and together we can discover what's really going on. Hey, hon, what you doing with your phone? Taking pictures? No, I'm asking questions. Like what? Hey, Bobo, do flowers have best friends? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, follow me. I want to show you something. Look, flowers do have best friends. Whoa. Some answers can only be found in nature. Discover the unsearchable. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a trail near you. Brought to you by the United States Forest Service and the Ad Council. You guys are listening to two former control freaks. <laughs> Semi-reformed control freaks. <laughs> I'm touching my back one. Here with Catherine Oster today. <laughs> Oh, we're having a great time, and um, I would love to invite people, if they want to check out my website, it is www.creatingyumminess.com, and Catherine, how can people find you? <laughs> oh, it makes me laugh because I'm still doing control in my business, and I don't have a website yet. <laughs> I love um, it. Uh, my Facebook page, Catherine Oster CF on Facebook. <laughs> Wonderful. How does it get better than that? Um, you know, that that's the thing too, like I, you know, talking about websites and stuff, I haven't liked mine and so it's in the process of being um, changed and most of it's changed over and some of the pages aren't and I'm like, you know, I just let go of it all and, and whatever it is, it is and, um, you know, but you can, and that's a, actually a great segue to this next <laughs> thing is like how much we can paralyze things by wanting to control it so much that we don't we either don't do anything because we know it's it's like you know let's say the example of a hoarder's house where you know it's so overwhelming to to try to even start. walk through or to start that you don't do anything and right and so then it just continues and aggravates the whatever you've decided so what would you say to somebody who might be feeling paralyzed that they can't do you know that they have to be perfect so then they don't even start so then they're paralyzed yeah you know, that vicious cycle so what questions what tips could you offer there Catherine my really uh funny thing that I would do for myself. So I'm going to use becoming a certified facilitator. Um, when I first took that class, it was March of 2018 was my first CF training. And then after that, I'm like, Oh my God, I can facilitate foundation classes now. Oh my God, I can do all this stuff. <laughs> and then I would be like, Oh my God, how do I even do this? <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. like, like figuring out the ropes of creating online. Um, Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I started, um, I kind of start, I started working for Crystal Crawford actually in probably the fall of 2018. So again, using that question of what else is possible here beyond what I could ever imagine, like with my business, with my life, asking that question every single day. And Crystal and I, we never, we had never met in person. Um, we ended up in a online cl- training class together and it, it was about business. And she posted um, something about accepting applications for people to work with her in her business. And mm-hmm. I saw that and the energy was like, boom, you know, like when I say, when you ask the question, the universe will deliver you something. But if, if you don't have a judgment of it, then you can see it, become aware of it for what it is. And the energy was so light, like, I couldn't even stop myself from signing up. So I filled out the application form, not even knowing what she was looking for, what I was getting into. It was just like loud and clear, choose this. And so um, she was like, 
she got back to me fairly quickly and she's like, Oh, so do you know how to do any like website building or designing? And I'm like, no, no. (laughs) (laughs) And then I'm like, and then I'm like, Oh my God, she's not even going to hire me. Like nothing is going to. And she's like, but she was just like, well, would you like to learn? And I'm like, yes. (laughs) So I started working and and so I started learning through her and then I started getting paid for it. Um, which is really cool because that's not something I had ever imagined possible before because that, I mean, I'm a country girl, a farm girl. Like I never learned about websites and stuff, but I, I was able to learn through her. And so when I started creating, so then I working in her business is great. You know, I learned a lot, but then kind of looking at my own CF business and, and what I wanted to create out of it and, and having my first online class, like, I stopped myself for so long from choosing mm-hmm. it because for the fear of that, nobody would register that um, nobody's going to like it. You know, I'm going to, you know, all the judgments. Right. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. I sat down, I looked in the mirror and I said, Catherine, what do you have to lose? Is it really going to kill you? Like that was where I went to. I'm like, am I going to die if I put out this class and nobody signs up? Is that going to kill me? No. Well, if nobody signs up, you're going to be in the same place you are right now. Or if some people what? do sign up, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, if some people do register, you have a little extra cash in your pocket and you can share these amazing life-changing tools with other people. And I'm like, okay, I haven't. So then I don't even know how that came into my head. Like, what are you going to die? <laughs> So I That's kind of funny. use that, like when that doubt in me comes up, when that fear comes up, mm-hmm. I'll look at it and I'll be like, what's the worst case scenario here? Am I going to die? No. Okay, let's try it. Dive in. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Well, and you know what? That was an example, you guys, of Catherine facilitating herself. <laughs> Just yeah. saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True. Yeah, and I've done this. I've done the same thing. I um, it, it's a big choice to become a certified facilitator. In from the standpoint of you have to take a lot of classes before you can, you know, go to the training. And you know, so it's a, it's a big commitment financially as well as time wise. And you know, now that I've been a facilitator for a while, I can see why. <laughs> you know, and. I did all the classes and I had all the requirements and the prerequisites to go to training. And I had this huge, like, I can't do it. Oh my God. No. Who do I think I am to be a facilitator? I went through all of the things and I, and then it was the same kind of conversation I had with myself. It's like, wait a minute, what are you doing here? you've already decided you're going to be the worst facilitator in the world. Okay. Well, what if you are, you know, that was the first thing. It was like, <laughs> would that be the worst thing in the world? You know? And then I was like, hmm. and then beyond that, I said, well, what if you just go to this training for you? You know how much these each and every class contributes to you and what you would like your life to be. So what if you took the pressure off of yourself to, you know, be like any other facilitator or you have to facilitate classes and all those things. And when I took that control off of myself, took the pressure off, I was like, oh, yeah, my whole body kind of just relaxed. And I was like, you know what? I'll just go. And if I have no expectation and then I had the greatest time and just kind of went. And so that was me getting out of control and getting out of my own way. And I'm so grateful that I did. <laughs> right. How long, yeah. how many years have you been CF for now, Betsy? Um, uh, either six or seven years now, something like, yeah. Wow. So. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm mean, so, so grateful. And I love facilitating foundation classes Oh, and now I can't, yeah. you know, I can't even imagine not doing it. I'm like, could I do those every day? I love them so much. <laughs> so, right? And come so a long also, way, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so, I can even, uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's so true. <laughs> and I remember, too, for myself, like, choosing CF training for the first time, all the things that you said, and then I had it in my head, like, kind of going back to that 10-second increments of choice conversation where, 
oh my God, I'm going to go to CF training and I have to go every year for the rest of my life. Like I was making this decision yes. for my first yes. CF training that it's going to be forever. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I'm like, wait a second, Catherine, what if you try it for one year, like one year and yep. then see if you want to do it again the next time, like allow yourself to choose or not. And I'm, and that also <laughs> was another way of taking off the pressure, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, it's so funny how we can just do this, you know, to ourselves where we have ourselves so tied up in knots and we haven't even chosen it yet. But yet, yeah. you know, you gave an example and I gave an example of what we did to almost thwart all of our efforts. And and then I was like, what are you doing? Like, knock it off, Betsy, and just, you know, but it, it, it is this whole thing. And I look at how many different places in my life have I done that where I did stop myself and be like, you know, oh, yeah, you know, put the brakes on and no, nope, can't do that. And cause I can't control the outcome. So I'm not even going to start, and, you know, all yeah, the exactly. That we do. <laughs> yeah. Yes. We really are. We, I mean, I'm definitely an expert in that. <laughs> yeah. So as, as we round up our time together, what, if you can give us maybe your, and you know, they may be the same or different from what you've already said, like your top go-to things <laughs> that when you find that you're being more of a control freak than you would like to be, or you're looking to change the energy of where you are choosing, what are your favorite things? Go. Get your bars ran. Number one, <laughs> get your bars ran. <laughs> Get your balls run. <laughs> I love it. Okay, what else? What else? Do you um, ask a question. So okay. whether it's how does it get any better than this, or what else is possible? Ask a question, and then oh, and then, yeah, I love yeah, go that. Ahead. Let me let me interrupt for just a second. So what if you don't know any questions? Oh, so if you're going to being a control freak and like, well, but I don't know what to do. I don't have any questions. Then what? <laughs> ask. What question could I ask here? <laughs> oh, okay. Darn it. Sounds like I'm being thwarted again. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like I would say um, just if you're, so if being a control freak, how you're controlling your life is working for you, that's cool. Like usually you're not looking to change things then, but right. when, You know, like I talked about for me, like there was things showing up in my relationship and I was having these emotions that I didn't want to be having. I knew, I guess I knew somewhere that they could be different. I would Mm. catch myself in the moment of that emotion and I would, well, try to ask a question and, and, um, and if I didn't have that, it's like just stopping for 10 seconds. Like, you know, that, that other rule of like, just count to 10 and then choose something or then see how things are like your, your moment, your ability to just kind of get present in the moment for 10 seconds, even if you don't know a question will allow you to just stop the train that you're going on. You stop the train and then maybe you can choose a different track. Mm-hmm. Wow. I love that. Wow. Okay. There's been so many different, great tools here. So let's not judge ourselves for anything we've chosen or we haven't chosen. Okay. Right. Like let's throw judgment out the window. Like say goodbye. Goodbye judgment. You've been here too long. (laughs) You can leave now. (laughs) Yes. That's saying about, um, what is that funny saying they have about house guests and fish after three days or something? Oh yeah. They start to smell. (laughs) Right. I mean, how smelly is our judgment? Uh (laughs) A lot more than stinky fish that's been in the refrigerator too long. So let's get rid of judgment and have fun, you guys, like with wherever you are now in the journey of your life. And if you're listening to this show, you're, you're a seeker, you're looking to, you know, make your life easier. And that's what these conversations and these questions and, and laughs and tips, and sometimes we cry, all of it on here. It's, you know, it's to contribute to the life that you you know you would like to be creating. That, And it's not to say your life is bad now. It's just like, 
what more could you add to it? That's one of my favorite questions. Yes. Like, what more can I add here? What more can I be? And that also gets me out of control because you can't control, you can't control the future. And, you know, so if you're asking, you're like, what more, what else, who else? That gets you out of the confines of your lists and, you know, your, your daily agenda. And what else, what else, what else is also another fun question, really just like, what else could I be here? What else could I create? Uh, and all the other wonderful questions and tips that Catherine and myself shared with you guys today. It's, wow, this has just been so much fun. And have fun with being even more out of control, Catherine, with all of your businesses <laughs> and all of the things you're creating. I wonder, I wonder what glorious things are awaiting you. Thank you Thank so you. much for being here with me today. What You're a so fun welcome. time. <laughs> I hope you'll come back and play sometime. Yes, it's a date. I don't know when, awesome. but it's a date. <laughs> awesome. Thank you guys so much for listening. I hope you got as much joy and pleasure out of this time together than, as I did. Or more. Have a great week, everybody. <laughs> Thanks again, Catherine. Bye-bye. Bye. bye. bye.